Hello. Today we're going to talk about Sally Ride. We're going to talk about who she was as a person, but we're also going to talk about what she symbolized as a woman and a queer person in science and especially space science. As she famously said, you can't be what you can't see. As the first woman in space, Sally Ride opened doors for women heading into the sciences. And in coming out after she died, she has opened the door even more for queer individuals as well. Sally was born in 1951 to a liberal, somewhat activisty mother and a far more conservative father. When her mother was asked whether her father would mind more, whether his two daughters turned out to be gay or Democrats, she confidently said that he would mind more that they were both Democrats. Much of what we know about Sally, we know through her actions and the words of other people. According to her sister Bear, she had an inherent Norwegian reticence and was so reluctant to talk about her personal life that many friends and some family didn't find out about her cancer diagnosis until her obituary. In fact, Sally was described by her sister as not really liking labels, and the fact that we have seen her called gay or lesbian after her death is rooted in what other people have said of her and not how she chose to define herself. Sally was talented in things other than science as well. She was on the pre-professional youth tennis circuit, uh, and in fact, she played mixed doubles against Billie Jean King uh, in the 70s. This was before Billie Jean King was aggressively outed in 1982. So you have to wonder if they acknowledged to each other at the time their nascent queerness or if that was something that came out later during their long friendship. Sally wasn't someone who thought women should absolutely be astronauts. I don't care that there haven't been any women astronauts. I'm going to be one. It was after the Equal Employment Opportunity Act that NASA looked back and realized that they didn't have any female astronauts and they had very few people of color working for them. So they placed ads in magazines like Ebony and also publicized widely that they were looking for female astronauts. Sally applied when she was still doing her doctorate at Stanford University. You might ask yourself why she was so hesitant to be out as a lesbian or gay or whatever you want to call it uh, before her death. And the way that NASA treated her as a woman may give you some hint of that. Apparently, the engineers at NASA made a makeup kit for female astronauts. They also asked if a person going to space for a week would need 100 tampons. In case you have never used tampons, 100 is way too many for one week, and that week might not even be on your period. She also was questioned in a lot of ways that her male counterparts were not. She was asked if she would cry if things started to go wrong on the space shuttle. And she refused to accept a bouquet of flowers when she landed on, after her space flight because none of the male astronauts she went into space with were offered them. Sally was with her partner Tam O'Shaughnessy for 27 years. And honestly, in looking into Sally Ride, I was hoping to learn more about how closeted women found each other in the time before online dating. The answer that I got was, it was a friendship that turned into something more. That's what happened with Sally and her college girlfriend. Uh, they had been roommates and then it evolved into something else. And she met Tam when Tam was 12 and Sally was 13 when they played.
they wouldn't actually get into a romantic relationship until Sally was already working at NASA. You may be thinking that probably after Sally Ride posthumously came out, there were queer astronauts all over the place, or NASA was inundated with a whole bunch of LGBTQ people looking to become astronauts. That has not really been the case. This is NASA's active LGBT advisory group webpage. As you can see, it is very broken. They do have a nice logo with a rainbow, but there is a countdown on the page to San Francisco Pride 2015 that I accessed this page in September of 2020. NASA does have a page dedicated to a mission statement for LGBTQ employees, and there are apparently some groups at different NASA stations other than the ones in Texas, but as it remains, there has only been one out queer astronaut since ever. Anne McLean was dramatically outed. She did not choose to become an out astronaut. She was charged with a crime while she was on a space flight by her soon to be ex-wife. So her name got heard all across the world as being the first lesbian, out lesbian astronaut, but it wasn't by her choice. There is an organization called Out Astronaut that is dedicated to getting more queer people into space. They just awarded their first scholarship for a queer person to go to space school. Finally, why might Sally Ride not have felt like it was safe to come out? Did she have an obligation to come out as a famous queer person? In view of that, I would like to share with you a piece from Sally Ride's official Times obituary. In her New York Times obituary, there are three sentences dedicated to her ex-husband, Stephen Hawley. There are only two lines dedicated to her partner of 27 years, and one of them is a parenthetical. Sally wasn't ashamed of who she was. She was just very private. And I don't think that public figures owe us anything. But I do think that in allowing her story to be told after she died, she has provided a wealth of young queer people, and especially young queer people who are interested in science, with something to hold on to and have made it in a way that they can be what they can see.